Cool. So uh, let's start off with talking about MIDI stuff. I think that's what maybe, I don't know, it's definitely more fun. I mean, they're both fun, audio and, um, and, uh, and MIDI stuff. But let's go ahead and start talking about MIDI stuff in here. It's not super hard. Uh, there's just a couple of main things we need to talk about with MIDI in uh, Ableton Live. And the, the first thing is how to get instruments. And even before that, I guess, is where the instruments live in Ableton Live. There are basically two places over here in your browser where instruments live in Ableton Live. Uh, well, I guess three if, if you think about it. There's sounds, there's instruments, and then there's plugins. Sounds and instruments are basically the same. They're both the Ableton Live instruments. Um, uh, those are the ones that come with Ableton Live. So these are kind of, I count these as similar. That's why I said two in the beginning. And the uh, plugins is the other location. This is where your third-party VSTs are. If you don't remember uh, how to get your third-party VSTs into Ableton Live, uh, it's in the preferences um, overview from yesterday that, that uh, the intro uh, number three preferences uh, that we went over yesterday. So the sounds and the instruments. Now these basically have the same uh, presets in them, but the difference is that sounds is you're searching by presets by sound category. So in here you can see there's ambient and evolving, there's bass sounds, there's booms, there's brass, there's effects, there's exotic, experimental, guitar and plucked, mallets, um, orchestral, uh, pad, percussive, pianos, keys, strings, synths, all this stuff down here. This is all, these are all uh, Ableton Live instruments that come with Live. You can get them from the packs, you can get them from whatever version of Live you've got. If you have Live Suite, you've got access to way more, but there are a lot that are included with Live regular version as well. Uh, and then you have the instruments, and the instruments are basically showing you all of the kind of baseline instruments, but if you click on these, then you can get inside of these to the different types of sounds as well. So you can see all of these different types here are all the same as they were over here, but this one is going by type of sound completely, and when you open one of these, uh, mm -hmm. it's going to be one of the, um, like one of the instruments that comes with Ableton Live. It doesn't really, it doesn't really tell you which one it's going to be. It just opens one up and there it is. Whereas instruments is like, you know what? I want to use analog for something and I want to use analog to get a, a mallet sound. Analog is like an analog emulation synth. So that's the big difference between those. They actually both end up in the same places, but they kind of get to it from different uh, routes. The drums are, as you would suspect, drum kits. These are different drum kits. You have all these different drum hits that are all samples that are, that are included with Ableton Live. And then you've got your different drum kits in here. And you can, you can hear that, I think you can hear, yeah. You can hear that uh, it, when I click on these, it gives me a, um, a preview of what that drum kit sounds like. And same thing with these instruments. If I click on these, it gives me a preset of what that instrument sounds like as long as I have on the kind of preview button over here, this little headphone thing. This is the preview button, so that shows me what this instrument is going to sound like. So you can kind of go through and get a feel for these even before you start using them. Uh, down here in the plugin section, this is where all of our VSTs and audio units live. And as I said before, I usually prefer to use VSTs. My VST, you'll notice my VST folder is kind of empty right now and the reason why is because I'm using an M1 Mac and I'm using Ableton Live in native version. This is the live beta and it's in native version and not all the VSTs are actually compatible with this right now as all the audio units are compatible. So the audio units work fine but the VSTs do not work fine. The VSTs only work if the company has made a VST update or maybe I haven't updated it yet or something like that. So there's I, I usually tend to use, and I usually recommend that people use the VST versions of plugins in Ableton Live, but um, for now, and maybe for today, I'm, I've been using the audio units uh, recently just because that's what I have the most access to because of my computer situation uh, using the M1 uh, a MacBook Air with Live in beta version. But I will say, 
It is smoking fast. I'm loving it, uh, this native version. The Rosetta version, the, the regular version of Live 11, um, does okay, but it still, it still like spiked the CPU quite a lot, so it wasn't perfect. This one doesn't really spike the CPU. It's, it's fantastic. But this is where your other instruments live. These uh, other plugins are in here. So we got the audio units up here. We got the VSTs down here. I don't, I don't have the VST3s turned on. Maybe they would show up. Maybe more of them would show up. I don't know. But I don't really use those that much. Okay, so over here, let's go back to our instruments. And let's say, for example, that we want to use a, uh, let's make like a drum beat here. So I'm going to grab drums and let's grab the 808 boom kit. No, not the boom kit, the core. Let's use the core kit here. So I got that. Turn that up a little bit so I can hear it. Cool. And I, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm turning up my level of my preview right over here on the right hand side. That helps me turn up my preview level there. So I got that. And so I like that drum kit. I'm going to drag it over here into my MIDI track. I could just drag it here anywhere. Boom. Let go of it. And there we go. Now I can, I can play it. And there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my metronome. I'm going to set my tempo for a tempo that I like. Let's just put it 96. There it is. And let's go ahead and let's, let's set this for input quantize. Now input quantize is something we did speak about briefly with uh, Pro Tools. Basically what this does is it's going to quantize everything as I play it in. So the way we do that in Ableton Live is I go up here to edit and go down here to the bottom, do, 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 right there, to record quantization. So record quantization basically means that as I play, it's going to go ahead and quantize things. Now, when I'm using my uh, live push to perform, I don't really do this because live push has a quantize button on it uh, that Ableton Live, that this, uh, that, that my current controller does not have. Um, so let's see here, is there a way to, yeah, it's just command U is normal, but it doesn't work the way that the, it does with the push. With the push, I don't have to have the, the interior of the clip selected or it automatically selects it for me. Without the push, it doesn't really do it. It doesn't really work the same way. Well, let me kill Avid, there we go. Um, it doesn't work the same way so I use input quantize when I'm not using the push. So, so I'm going to hit my play button. I've got everything playing here. You can see I just hit my space bar to play, the, play it. And what I'm going to do is when I'm ready to record, I'm going to hit a uh, little record button here inside one of these clip slots. Okay. What's going to happen is because my quantize is set to one bar, it's going to start recording on the downbeat of that bar. Okay, so let's go ahead and just listen to this real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and I got my, my, my sounds and that's gonna be what I'm gonna record. Okay, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, cool. So what I did was I just recorded for two bars and when I was ready to start playing that loop, I hit that play button again. Now this is really easy for me because I'm using a trackball mouse and the trackball mouse just stays in the same place when I hit it. So it doesn't move. I don't have to worry about it moving or anything like that, like a regular mouse or like my trackpad. I have to, con I have to worry about the cursor moving. But with a trackball, I don't have to worry about that. Let me show you again. I'm going to record into this next clip slot right here. I love this mouse. I've been using trackball mice for uh, 15 or 16 years. I don't know, a long time. I love trackball mice. Yeah. Okay, uh, there is a way to play notes with the computer keyboard. I mentioned it yesterday, but we'll talk about it again a little bit later. Uh, so here we go. I'm gonna just do this one more time with this one here. Okay, one, two, three, four. And you'll see I'm clicking it kind of towards the end of the bar. It doesn't have to be right on the bar because the way it records and plays and stops and everything is on the beat because of this one bar quantize right here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Notice how it stops on the beat 
if I go to play it, it plays on the beat. It also records on the beat and it loops on the beat. So what's happening right now is if I hit that record button, it records for as long as I want it to record. And then when I hit the play button, it starts looping that clip. So basically I can go ahead and get these ideas going without stopping the music at all. Let's do it again. And I let it go for four bars that time. Okay. So is that like a smart feature? No, it's just on. This is not special. This is just Ableton Live. Nothing special going on right now. This is just how you use live, okay? Now, we did hear that I hit a weird note in there, so I'm gonna double click on this clip right here, and we can see, oh, it's super fire. See, there's like one weird little note right over here on the side. I don't want that note there, so I'm just gonna highlight it and hit delete, and there we go, now it's gone. Nice. Now, what I wanna have is I'd like to have a little hi-hat going on in here, so let me just find my hi-hat while it's playing. Cool, so what I can do is I can record this hi-hat into my clip if I hit this little session record button right over here on the right hand side. So watch what happens when I hit this, this play button turns red, okay? If I turn it off, the play button's green. When it's green, I'm not recording. When it's red, I will be recording into this. But it's not going to over, uh, it's not going to uh, replace the MIDI, it's gonna record on top of the MIDI, here we go. And there we go, just recorded my little hi-hat part. Now I can turn this off. Cool, okay. Now let's listen to some other sounds. And I can just keep building stuff up like this. There we go. Let's hear. Get like a, a cowbell sound going, should we? Here's a 808 cowbell. You hear that I missed the first couple right in there, so I'm just gonna come back around and play that second. Actually, let's do it a different way. So I got these in here, and you hear how it's missing one of those. Go up here, here it is, there it is, right there. So what I can do is I can just hold down Option and grab this note and just drag it over. Just like with Logic or Ape or Pro Tools or anything, I've got my MIDI in here that I can go ahead and, and go ahead and, um, and mess with here. Okay, so let's program in a clave like that. And I'm gonna draw this one in. And here's how I draw it in. Right up here in the upper right hand side is my draw mode. The shortcut for this is the B key. Remember B? Remember yesterday in our in our lesson we said, oh, it's our, in our in our when we went over the quiz, we said, oh, it's probably the D key, right? For draw. Well, it's not the D key, it is the B key for draw. B. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is now that it's in draw mode, I'm going to go ahead and draw it in just by clicking it. Like, there we go. Now I don't need to listen to it, so I'm gonna turn off my little preview button here. There we go. 
cool. Let's see what this one sounds like. Yeah. Let's put that in here like this. There we go. Let's listen. Cool. Who's calling me? No. There we go. I'm just going to click and drag it across. There we are. There we go. And you just click on it to get rid of it, or you click it to put it in there. And you can just click and drag. There we go. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Now, while this is playing, I can go ahead and work on like a little mix of these. If I go up here to this little button right here in my track, I click on it and it shows me a mix of all everything that's happening right now. Yeah, Josh <laughs> says the, uh, the simplicity of this DAW is really effing amazing. 100% agree with you there, bro. Uh, this is why uh, people love Ableton Live because it's really, really easy to use. Let's see here. Where's my hi-hat? Not the hi-hat, the cowbell. Cowbell's too loud. I'm sorry that you can have, you can have too much cowbell. There we go. I'm going to pull this down. Cool. Mess around with these little bits. There we go. Pull these up a little bit more. Well, I don't need them to be up more. There we go. Cool. Okay. And I've got like a little mix going on here. Sweet. Oops. Okay. And I can close this down, get my drums back. There we go. Boom. Okay. So you can use this in a couple of different ways. You can play the stuff in really easily. You have like a little area here where you can draw stuff in. It's really, really easy to use. It's just a matter of learning where things are slightly different from your other DAWs. But really the reason why people use this DAW is because it's, it's not that it does it doesn't do it. I mean, it does do new things, but it does everything so quickly and so easily. And remember from yesterday, we had uh, we all of our different um, loops and stuff that we had. Well, if I want to bring in like an audio loop in here now, all I have to do is just hit play on this so I can listen to it. Let's go over here. My uh, sample phonics. Let's go to beat weirdness. Let's listen to some loops in here. Let's go to uh, top loops. are a little bit too weird. Yeah, there we go. That's kind of cool sounding. Let's drag that over here to an audio track and let's play. And you can hear it automatically went in at the same tempo, at the right tempo. Okay, let's listen to a couple more. Actually, let's go, let's go to the bongo ones here. Let's get these bongo ones here. And these bongo ones are fast, it's like 120. There we go, I'm just gonna drag that in here. There we go. There we go, cool. Nice. Put this one in the background. Pull this one up a little bit. Let me just turn my level up in my headphones. There we go. There we go. Cool. Cool. Nice. I'm going to go ahead and change the loop length on this one here. There we go. I think I like that a little bit better, maybe? I don't know. Let's try a different loop over here. Uh, I kind of like that one. It's not super, not so weird. There we go. Yeah, cool. I like that one the best. All right. And I'm adjusting the, I'm just adjusting the loop length of this uh, loop right here. I'm going to go back in here. Let's get that cowbell down a little bit less. Where 
are you? You're right over here. Yeah, super cool, right? There we go. So I got that there. Got that bongo in there. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. So now that we've got this, let's go ahead and let me just drag these over here. Let's get a baseline going. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep the loop going while we play this. I'm going to go over here. Still keeping it in sync. Yep. Everything stays locked in, which is why this is so, so cool. We're going to go over here and grab some bass sounds. Let's go. Let's try that one. That sounds pretty cool. So I'm going to drag it in. Let's listen to this. Cool. Now, what you may have just noticed is I wasn't actually recording. Let me go ahead and stop this so I can just concentrate on what's going on. What I did, I wasn't actually recording that and I played it and it captured it for me. And this is a really cool thing that actually uh, Logic also does. Logic has done this for years and years and years. It's called Capture Record. Basically, there's a function in both of these DAWs where you can uh, be playing something and it will actually capture the MIDI even if you weren't recording. And I love this feature. I love this feature so much because a lot of times I'm just like, I'm just kind of playing and I'm just getting some ideas together and I'm not recording it. And then I play something that's like, oh, that's fire. And so I want to be able to have that and keep it for later. And this is, comes in super, super handy. And so here's how you do this. Let me go ahead in here. Let's get rid of this. So I'm going to go ahead and just play some stuff. And here we go. Okay, and then I can just play it back. Now you'll see that it kind of starts in a weird area here. But I'm just going to move this back. Like this. Quantize these. Move this one here. There we go. And you have to do, I'm gonna, like doing some fine tuning here, but the idea is there. Now if I want to record some different stuff, I can just record like normal. Nice. Now I like this bass sound, kind of, but uh, let's mess around with this filter a little bit here. There we go. Yeah, much better. Okay, cool. So we got that. We got some MIDI. We got some audio going on. I'm going to go ahead and recolor these real quick. Just highlight the track. I'm just shift clicking on the track here. I just click on the first one, hold down shift on this last one here to select all the tracks in the middle. I right click. Whoops. I right click. And then I just go down here and I choose the color I want to use for the track. And then I can right click again and go assign track color to clips. There we go. Now everything's the right color. Let's go ahead and change this one to red because that's the colors I like for stuff. Boom. There we go. So now, cool. So that sounds pretty good, but this kick drum sound is like a little bit too uh, dark. It's like a little bit too deep for me. Here, let's just go ahead and solo this track out. And that's cool until I add a bass in, but then it's not as cool anymore. So let's go ahead and change that kick drum out. There's a couple of ways to do this, but the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to take the MIDI and grab the MIDI out of there. Now, a really, really easy way to do this, which I absolutely love, is I just go over here to the track I want to separate out and I right click on it and I go extract chain. Now this works for the Ableton Live drum kits. It doesn't work for other stuff. So depending on what you're doing with it or what drum kits you're using, but if you're using the Ableton Live drum kits, you can use this to grab your drum sounds out into individual things. So I go over here, I say extract chain. Now it grabs my kick drum out like this 
it's the kick drum. There we go. Which one were you? We're playing this one here. So I, I don't want these other ones. Let me go ahead and close this back up. And I'm just going to get rid of these here. Just I can click over here on my scene, master scenes, and I just click like that. And now, okay, so here's my kick drum. Now this kick drum, I'm going to go ahead and change that sample out. Here's how you do it. It's super, super, super easy. I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to say, go to my drums right here. Go to my drum hits, go to kick. And then I'm just going to grab, why can we not find these sounds? Huh? Interesting. I wonder why these are not coming in, whatever. Okay. Let's grab this one right here. I'm just going to drag it down onto my bass drum. Boop. And now, there we go. I just changed my kick drum sound. And you can hear that kick drum sounds a lot better with this uh, loop. So I'm just going to rename it. Put that back over here. Cool. Nice. Yep, sounds much, much better, I think. I don't know, do y'all agree? Let me know. Okay, so let's do all that again. Let's start over again and uh, do the same type of thing one more time just so we can see it in action happening uh, again. So I'm just going to make a new MIDI track, delete all these other ones here, just get rid of everything. Let's start over with a clean slate. And we're basically just going to do the same thing again. Let's do it at... Um, Let's do it at 150. Let's do some kind of trappy type of thing. And what I'm going to do is when we're uh, doing the input quantize, we're going to change it to eighth notes because when you're doing kind of trap beats, uh, when your tempo is that fast, 16th notes are way too fast because now we're going is the eighth note. So the 16th note is which is uh, too fast to actually quantize to uh, because it's going to get too weird too quick. So we're just going to go over here, grab the 808 here, put this in here, and let's go and choose a different setting for this kit. Now, here's something that's really cool. In Ableton Live 11, this is not part of Live 10, but in Live 11, they have these macro variations. So over here, they've got these macro things, which were in, these, these have been in here since Live 8, and or even maybe earlier. And these things here allow you to set up different parameters to be controlled by these knobs right here. And these knobs correspond to the, the knobs on your keyboard here. And so with these knobs here, actually I can set up presets on here. So if I click on these, it changes just the knob settings. Right? So you can hear that. And you can hear how much it changes that sound up. So we're going to go ahead and uh, let's record this. Okay. You can hear the last one though. It didn't do it right. Uh, because I have it quantized to, I have it quantized wrong. So it's dun, 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 dun. let's move this one over like that. There we go. Cool. I'm just going to take all of these and set them to 127 uh, velocity. Now the way we do that is there's a little thing down here. If this doesn't show up. It's because of this arrow here. Let me go ahead and zoom in so you can see what's going on down here. Here's our velocities. And I can just open this up. And in here, we can see if I highlight all these, if I hold down my command key on my keyboard, I can drag these up and down. Or I could go and do them one by one by just moving down here and dragging them around. You can see what the velocity is. If you hit command A uh, to get all of them, I can just drag them all up to the top there. Okay, cool. So we got that there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here with my, uh, let's do a hi-hat. Let's do the hi-hat here, this closed hi-hat. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my, uh, my grid here, and you can see what the grid is set to. I'm gonna go ahead and draw in my hi-hats. I'm gonna see what the grid is set to by command, uh, this one eighth here is my eighth notes, and if I hit command one and command two, it changes that grid setting right there, right? So what I can do is I'm just gonna say, okay, let's do some, some of these. Oops, hold on a second, let's do, there's a, there's a key to lock them in. I forgot, it's option. If you hold down option on the Mac, it locks it into the same note. Okay. Okay, cool, so that sounds pretty good. I'm gonna go in here to these and cut these, there we go. And I hit the fold button over here on the left hand side so it locks in so I'm just seeing the notes I wanna see. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put some little thingies in here. Let's do a little roll, a 30 second note roll. There we go. Cool, like that, and drag these over here. Grab there, there we go, boom, okay, cool. Nice, okay. Now I think we could even mess with the pitch on those. Uh, let's see, let's see what these drums have for, there's my hi-hat. Oh, it doesn't have anything but a level. It's not a sample, this is actually a real-time uh, creation. Uh, it's actually synthesis here. Let me go ahead and change this here. Okay. I'm just messing with that sound a little bit. Now, this, I'm gonna keep this one here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm going to, let's duplicate that part instead of d extracting it. I don't wanna extract the chain. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate this clip over to another one here and it, it just creates the same drum kit. I'm gonna get rid of these two sounds here so I just have that bass sound. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna use a different 808. Let's use the 808 boom kit. So I'm gonna drag that on here. Now this 808 boom kit, uh, here, let's listen to it, has different sounds, different 808 sounds in it. There we go. Let's listen to that one by itself real quick. Yeah, cool. And I'm going to get rid of some of these. I'm going to get rid of this one here. Nice. Okay. Now let's listen to it just with the uh, kick drum here. Okay. Now you can hear first of all that they're tuned differently. Uh, so we're going to have to we're going to have to mess with that. But also this one here is just too long. So this one here. There we go. There we go. Cool. There we go. Let's tune them though. Okay, I'm gonna tune this one. Uh, I can't tune this one, that's kind of annoying. So this is something you run into sometimes with some of these the kits. They don't have a, it doesn't, it has a tone knob, it doesn't have a tuning knob in here. So it's, cause it's not a sample. This one is a sample, but um, I can tune this one, I guess. Let's go ahead and tune this one, the uh, pitch. Here we go. There we go, that sounds better. It's more in tune than it was. There we go. Cool. Okay, so we got that little thing going there. So what I did was I just copied it over. I just copied over the uh, the, uh, the the drum line that I had and just like took just, I deleted everything except for that kick drum there. And I just deleted a couple things. So there we go. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Now let's add like a piano. Let's add a keyboard line in there. So I'm gonna insert another MIDI track there using Command Shift T. 
and we're gonna go in here we're gonna grab a uh, piano sound let's go here to our sounds here let's say uh, let's see piano and keys okay it's gonna play it in tempo so I'm gonna go ahead and just like cycle through let's try this one here let's see what this sounds like drag it in here and sounds like drag that on top okay cool so there's some ideas there Boom. let's see what pitch is that hold on my ear is not good enough to hear the pitch so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat but is it cheating is not cheating right I'm gonna go over here and grab a tuner I'm going to go over here and put the tuner in there. F. Okay, cool. So now I know what key my song is in. There we go. So now key of F. So here we go, record some. Awesome. Let's put another piano sound in there. Let's grab something from uh, Contact, shall we? Contact one that works over here. No, let's use contact from in here. Contact, where are you? Contact, there's contact. There you are, hanging out down at the bottom there. And we're going to use the uh, all for Arnold's piano. Okay. I forgot I'm in I'm making I'm in trap mode. Uh, contact is not free. No. Contact costs money. Cool. We're gonna slap some uh, we're gonna put some put some effects on this contact here. Let's go ahead and send it over here to Valhalla Room and put this in a big giant thing. There we go, cool. Let's send this one over here to some delays. Let's go ahead and grab, what's a good delay to use? What should we use? Do, 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 do. Oh, let's use, oh, let's use Volcano. Not Volcano, Timeless. Uh, let's see here. And the dry mix. Lock that bad boy in. That's pretty cool. There we go. And we can just find some sounds. 
That's much better. Okay, I want something like pretty strong. Cool, let's put a filter on here as well. It's a really good filter that comes with Ableton Live. Uh, the auto filter. Drag that here, put that right there, start messing with it. There we go, cool. Let's add another synth in here. Let's use uh, Yuhei's Diva. Again, not a free synth. Actually, you know what is a free synth though? Tyrell N6. There we go, we'll use that. That's a free synth. This one here has a cool filter. There we go. Let's go in here. We'll just capture that. There we go. Pull that down with this. Let's get a filter on here. Cool. Let's throw in an audio loop in here for good measure. Not a MIDI loop, sorry. I made a MIDI track. Let's add in an audio loop in here. Let's go over here to our sample phonics again and we'll grab, hmm, let's see here, broken modular. Let's find some broken modular stuff. See what these sound like. There we go. There we go. Cool. Move this over here. And so you can hear that basically I haven't stopped it from going. It's just kind of, you know, just adding stuff in. Change the key of that audio loop. This one? Oh yeah, I can't even hear it. Let's change the key. What's the key though? Hold on, I can't hear the key very well with my headphones. Um, here, let's grab the, uh, let us grab the tuner and put it in the right key. Come on. I was in the right key, ish. Is that the right key? That's more or less an F. Oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Cool. But probably what I would do is I would actually take off the low end of this if I was, if I could actually hear the low end very well. Uh, here, let's, uh, not that, this. Because we don't want those messing with each other. Yeah, you don't want that too much. We don't need them both doing things. Cool, all right. There we go. Cool, 
So that's basic MIDI stuff. That's like getting a beat going, getting some like other things happening. Uh, we can use, you know, we can copy things over. Basically all the things you can do with any DAW, just the way that you do it's a little bit differently. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this uh, little MIDI thing that we've got and we're gonna lay it out into the arrangement view. So I'm just gonna grab here, let's grab this uh, bell piano. I'm just gonna name these tracks a little bit different. This is my uh, piano loop, piano, piano chords, I guess. Here's my synth lead. Boom, I'm gonna take these. Oh, here's my, uh, what is this? This is like a per percussion loop. Some kind of weird percussion loop. There we go, I have, yeah, it's cool. So I'm gonna take these. Now I have some shortcut stuff set up on here. Not you, there we go, F6 and F7. Uh, I've got a program called Keyboard Maestro. And the Keyboard Maestro, what it does is it has macros in it so I can actually uh, copy and paste stuff and do all these things really quickly. Uh, Josh says, I'm curious, Tony, how would that process be if you used your computer keyboard to act as a MIDI? Is it as seamless? Sure, I mean, you just have to get used to using it. I don't use my MIDI, like, my advice is if you're doing MIDI stuff, get a keyboard. Like, this keyboard was 120 bucks uh, and it came with a bunch of software that sounds awesome as well. This is a great, I mean, this is what I've got. I've just got it sitting in my lap right now. Um, and this is fine for stuff. I Using your computer keyboard as a MIDI keyboard is a very, very, uh, it's very, uh, it's a bad uh, replacement. It's a poor replacement. You can still do it. It works exactly the same. You just gotta click on this button right over here. I think somebody did ask me that earlier. I'm sorry, I forgot to answer that question. You just click this and it, and it turns your computer keyboard into a, a MIDI keyboard. But it doesn't feel the same. It doesn't work as good. It's not as smooth. Um, there's like issues that come up. Like I hate using my computer keyboard as a keyboard. Also, I can't use my little shortcuts that I've got set up on here or the shortcuts that Ableton Live has been putting into Live 11. So I don't really recommend it. And, and uh, MIDI controllers are not that expensive anymore. You do, get, you do gotta do what you gotta do. And what you gotta do is buy a proper MIDI controller. Uh, you can get a controller, like a little, you could get a huge controller for 50 bucks. You could probably get a used controller for free if you searched around for it hard enough. I mean, the people throw these things away all the time. Um, you could, uh, you know, you can find them used for super cheap. You don't need to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on these things, but it's, it's, it's part of your gear. You know, it's, it's like saying, I'm going to make, like you can make beats with the speaker on your computer too. Should you do that? No, you can. Absolutely. But, um, you know, uh, it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's not recommended. I don't recommend it. Um, also having these knobs on here, we're going to talk about these knobs and stuff uh, a little bit later, but having these knobs helps everything tremendously, tremendously. So, uh, there you go. All right. So I'm going to just go ahead and color code these real quick, just to stay organized. You might be sitting there being all, uh, uh, angry about this color as I am probably not but I it's driving me nuts um, actually I don't need to do it like that let's do like these let's make these this color let's make the synth uh, let's make you green blue green as he puts blue on there uh, okay there we go cool so I got these here now there's a couple ways to do this remember yesterday what we talked about how to how to, how to arrange this into a song so I'm gonna go ahead I've got all my clips up here up top I'm just gonna put this I'm gonna name this one ideas Command R to rename it, ideas. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and listen to these ideas. Let's go ahead and, um, here, let's. I'm gonna put these here like this. Now, if I play across here, let's put the piano chords in there as well. Nice, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Um, what I'm gonna do though is, let's see. What is on this mix bus here? What's on this mix? There's all sorts of crazy things on this mix bus here. Uh, bup, 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 and everything's going to the mix bus. Let me just see how this is routed here real quick. If I can figure it out easily. IO, let's see here, send. 
Nothing. Same thing to A. All right. We're going to see what we can do about this. Because the drums are going to sound weird if I pull them apart, but I like to have things pulled apart. But what I can do in the meantime, though, is I can just pull these down like this. And, oops. Stop it. Come on. There we go. Arr. What's happening? Hold on a second. Is my keyboard maestro still doing stuff in the background? No? Weird. Why is it not letting me shift click things? Whatever. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, there you go. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff here. Let's get rid of that and that. And so, so, so I have the snare drum. So we got this one here. Now we can play this one here. I'm gonna put this one down here. Get rid of the kick drum. There we go. Cool. And I'm just grabbing these down here, and now I can do this one here. Now, there's another way to do this, though, which I like a little bit better, and this is what we call uh, Insert and Capture Scene. And if you look up here under Edit, it is, wait, under Create? Yeah, it's under Create, uh, Capture and Insert Scene. It's right here, and it's Command-Shift-I. Now, what this does is it captures anything that's playing, and it puts it on a new scene. This is super, super cool. So, for example, if I have my bass going on here, or not the bass, let's do the lead. Let's do that. Now, this one's up here and these are down here. If I hit play on this, it's gonna stop playing that synth lead, right? But if I've got it playing here, all I have to do is click where I wanna put it after and I hit Command Shift I and it's going to insert it into the next scene after where I clicked over here on the right hand side. So let's just see that one more time. So I've got this one here is uh, hand clap only. This one here is hand clap plus uh, closed hat. And this one here is the same as that one. So let me just hit command D. There we go. Now this one here is all drums. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for the next one right here, I want all my drums. All my drums to be playing, right? Let's get the bass in there as well. Okay, so I've got these, I've got these playing up here and I've got these playing down here. So what I do is I click, I wanna put it in the next scene right after this and I hit Command Shift I. Everything that's playing is gonna come down there to that uh, next line. So here, let's listen to that. I use my arrow keys to go to the next one here, boom. Oh, I keep forgetting. Let me put this in two bars. That's why you use two bars. I never thought about that. I don't do trap music, so. There we go. Cool, there we go. Boom. Nice. So let's see this in action, actually. Let me go ahead and just go ahead and do this in real time as I would normally do it. So let's go ahead and play a couple of these. Start, let's start with this one here, actually. So I'm gonna start with that one. So I'm gonna just hit Command Shift I, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play different ones here. Cool, so that sounds pretty good. And I'm gonna capture them as I play. Whoops, that didn't capture right. There we go, cool. go here but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this one so it's just the hi-hat I'm just gonna grab this first bar here so it's just that one right there and now I can play this one here 
Now I'm using Command Shift I to capture these and make sure it captures this one as well. And if I didn't grab this one in time and it didn't put it up there, what I can do is I can just hold down Option and drag that down like that and it will play it from there next time. Go ahead and play these. Cool, okay. So this is how I can lay the stuff out. If I want to, I can name it. And let's give this one a name, intro, intro. And this one here will be uh, with percussion, intro two. And then down here, let's have intro three, intro part three. And here's my hi-hat, closed hat. And then here's all my drums all everything now let's um let's and let's call this one like maybe uh, all okay so let's let's grab a let's make a solo line as well so i'm going to go ahead and duplicate this i can hit command d over here to duplicate it let's call this one solo and let's add in let's add in a solo synth and i'm going to grab over here i'm just going to call this one uh, lead synth there we are and let's grab a new sound. Let's, let's use uh, let's use uh, da, 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 the Spectrosonics. Let's use Omnisphere for this lead sound. What time is it? Ten forty. Okay, we'll take a break here in just a second. Here's Omnisphere. Open this up. There we go. I actually haven't opened up Omnisphere inside this new version of Live. Uh, updates are available. Yeah, we'll get that later. Let's go over here to our patch browser. Let's go to a synth mono. Turn it down so we don't blast ourselves out. Not you. You? You? No, you. There you go, you. There you go. I'm using the keyboard to turn these up and down. Okay. Cool. So I got that so I can control it. And let's use. It's a trap. Whoa, that's amazing, but no. boys ha <laughs> 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 all right uh, may the force be with us okay so here we got this let's record this here And I'm going to put a filter on here. Let's go ahead and put an auto filter on here real quick so I can do some filtering stuff. And I'm just going to go ahead and let's see. Let's record that in here to the clip here. It should work. Awesome, and I'm just gonna go back, and I will show y'all how to do this stuff. We're gonna talk about automation stuff, uh, envelopes and stuff like that uh, a little bit later, but uh, not right now. Let's go ahead and just copy and put that in. There we go. And put that up a little bit higher. There we go.
Yeah, Bendy Boys. Bendy Boys is fine for blips and bloops, but I wanted to have something a little bit more like this in here. Let's go ahead and throw some uh, reverb. Okay, cool. So we got that there. Now let's lay this stuff out in a way that makes some kind of sense. And we could do it like we did yesterday by hitting this record button over here. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit the stop button a couple times to get everything back to zero. Let's hit this record button and we could play the stuff in. Okay, so now what it's doing is it's actually going to play it in. Hold on, wait, wait, let's stop for just a second. Let me show you the overview here. The overview is up here. We can make it bigger and smaller. This shows you basics of what's going on uh, with everything here. So I'm going to just hit Command Z to undo all that. Let's go back to the beginning. And you can see it kind of happening up here across the top as I go ahead and do it. So let's go ahead and hit this button here and uh, let's hit play. You can see these things coming in. Wait, hold on a second. Before we continue that, let's hit the, turn off the record button here. That's why it's, it's recording in. Or, wait, hold on a second. Yeah, there we go, cool. Okay, now we're ready to go. Do it. Okay. this one going right here okay and I'm gonna go back and edit this a little bit to pull some things in and out and do some other fun things with it and let's set this up in some kind of like a little bit of a song type of layout I'm gonna let this go for like a little bit. Come back here. And I can stop this piano part here. Come back to this all here. Okay. Let this roll for just a little bit, and then we'll bring in the solo part here. Here's the solo right here. So I just hit the space bar to stop it. You can see the over overview of it up here. And you can see also, you can actually play back from different parts here. I can set my playback from different sections of the song, right, from over here, I think. Is that how you do it? I don't actually. Oh, it's playing this right here, though. Let's see here. Let's play you, boop. There we go. Yeah. You just got to make sure you hit this little button down here. This is kind of a, a newer button, actually. I'm not really sure. I know what that button does, but I don't know what this button. Enable follow actions globally. 
Enable disable follow actions in the session view and disable no follow actions will occur. Interesting. That's uh, maybe new for Ableton Live 11 or maybe this new version of the beta version of Live 11. Uh, this back to arrangement button is new for this version of Live. I haven't seen it in Live even a Live 11, I don't remember seeing it there. So that's an interesting new addition. But what we can do is we can go up here and we can click around up top and see where do we wanna, where we wanna start from or whatever. But we can also just go over to our arrangement view over here and just see everything in here. Now, you'll notice that everything is all big like this. If I wanna make it smaller so I can see a little bit better, I can click on these little arrows here on the right-hand side or I can hold down Option, it will click all of them here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of some of these, like I don't want the bell piano playing right there, I don't want it playing right here. And the ending part, uh, I don't need the percussion loop playing here, I just want that last chord in my piano happening. So if we listen to the end part here. Awesome, okay? So we go in here and play. Great, we can play from different parts. Okay, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and add some whooshes. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Uh, let's grab those from my sample magic. Um, b -b 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 ultimate effects. And we'll go in here and we'll say risers and lifters. And 120, I guess 128. And then in here, We'll just grab some wind. Uh, you can see here, these are one bar lifts, these are two bar lifts, these are three, four bars, and eight bars. Let's grab an eight bar lift wind. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this in here and throw it right there, but I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm actually gonna do like this. I'm not gonna let it play all the way up. So I'm just gonna grab it like this and kill the end of it like this, like that. I'm gonna send it over to this one here so I have a little that on it. Let's listen. Probably turn the level down. Usually these are a bit loud. You know, whatever. A bit on the cheesy side, but whatever. It works for now, uh, just to get us some ideas going. And we can also take these and say, let's see here. What else we got in here? Tape, vinyl, and static effects. Oh, uh, these are all. These are actually really, these are too short to really use them. Uh, but I do have, where do I have it? Let's see, vinyl. Somewhere. Not here. Samples, vinyl, vinyl, vinyl. Where does it go? It goes in Ableton Ideas, I think. Do, 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 do. I don't remember where I put it right now. Here, special loops, there we go, vinyl background noise. I'm just gonna throw that in there. <clears throat> and this one here, turn off the warp, and start this in the beginning. I'm just gonna duplicate this over, there we go. So now, got a little bit of tape noise in there. I just have in my special loops favorites category over here. Cool. And we'll take this one and copy and paste it over here as well so it comes in before this drum drum thing here. We'll put it again right over here as well. Just to have something in there for now. And as you can see, once you get to this part here, it's not so dissimilar from Logic. It's very, very similar to Logic or Pro Tools or whatever. But you don't really want to work in this scene all the time because if you're working in this one all the time, you kind of lose the point of, of getting ideas and loops together. You might as well just be using Logic or Pro Tools at this point if, if all you're going to do is use this view here. And I have seen people use this view and I'm kind of like, yo, what are you doing? You got to use that session view as well. You're missing a lot of what makes Ableton Live special if you're not using the uh, session view. So let's go ahead and kill the end of that. And that like that. Cool. And basically in Live is very similar to Logic or Pro Tools. Uh, your, your cursor thing, if you open it up, your, your mouse kind of turns into a... Uh, 
uh, like a trim tool here. Um, uh, you just have to, re like th the way it's set up is down here is where you can select stuff and up here is where you grab stuff. But if you mouse around long enough, you'll kind of figure that out, hopefully. Um, the, the main part that people get confused about really, I think, is these little arrows here, opening and closing these tracks. But uh, what you want to do is just, you know, you can highlight using the kind of bottom section here and then grab up here on the top. It's kind of the opposite of Pro Tools. Pro, Pro Tools is the grabbers on the bottom and the selector tools up top, I think. Now that I'm not, I don't have Pro Tools in front of me, I, I forget. <laughs> My memory is like really bad about stuff. But uh, it's, it's, I, it's a little bit different from Pro Tools, but not that different from Logic or Pro Tools. Um, let's add in a couple cymbal smashes in here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add an audio track in here. We're going to call this one Sims. And here's what I would do. I'd go over here to my drums, grab a cymbal smash, go into the cymbals category here. Let's go down to the bottom and... Yeah, whatever. Let's use that one there and drag it in. I'm going to put it right there. And I'm going to turn this volume way down because that's going to be way too loud. And I'm going to put a reverb on it because we're drenching everything in reverb. There we go. Cool. Color it orange because it's a drum. There we go. And just copy and paste it over here. I tend to do my programming uh, a balance between audio stuff and MIDI stuff. I do a lot of MIDI stuff. I do a lot of audio stuff. I do both a lot. I like throwing, I like kind of going back and forth between it because some things I like to do in audio, some things I like to do in MIDI. I have friends who like any kind of samples like this, they would drag them in as MIDI, but I don't like to do that because a, a lot of times I like to start tracks in weird places, like right here. And you can't do that with MIDI. Cool. All right. So let's go ahead and pause there. Uh, what we're going to do is talk about recording audio in the next video. We're, we're kind of at the end of MIDI stuff and kind of laying things out. Now what I want to do is I actually want to get in here and record some audio. So we're going to do that in the next video.